Today I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how to create a trip or a route using the Trip Planner app on the Garmin Zumo XT. Let's start by clicking on the apps icon from the home page. Here you can see all of the apps visible on this Garmin XT. Now I have the Trip Planner at the top left corner. You can rearrange these apps by just pressing on them and holding down for a couple of seconds and you can then move them around on the screen. So on your XT, if you don't see the Trip Planner app, it could be farther down the page. You might try using the black arrow key on the left to scroll down until you find the Trip Planner app on your XT. But I have mine on the top left so it's easy to find. Let's click on the Trip Planner. You'll notice two large buttons at the bottom of the Trip Planner app screen. One for saved trips and one to create a new trip. If we click on the Saved Trips button, it will let you see a list of all the previously created trips. Now here you can see the trips that we've either imported from Basecamp or some other method, as well as the trips that we have previously created and saved in the Trip Planner app. The Ride to Midland trip was one that was created in Trip Planner, and then below that you can see the ones that have been imported from Basecamp. If we click on the little tools icon at the top left, you can see some other options you have, such as being able to share the trip through Garmin Drive, which is an app on your phone, Bluetooth, or using the memory card if you have one installed in your Zumo XT. You'll also notice you have the ability to import trips using the Trip Planner, and these would be trips or routes that you created in Basecamp or some other application. You can also create a new trip from here, which has the same effect as clicking the New Trip button on the app's home page. I should also point out that what Basecamp refers to as a route, the Zumo XT Trip Planner refers to as a trip, but they both have the same meaning. Clicking New Trip or Create Trip brings up the Create Trip Editor, as you can see here. Now the first step in creating a trip is to set the starting location for this route or for this trip. This is the point at which you're going to start your trip. So when we click on Select Start Location, the app is going to bring up a screen that lets you use some of Garmin's search capabilities to find a location. The first option to select a location is where I am now, and that basically is wherever the GPS is located, the physical uh, GPS coordinates, you can use that. So if you're on the road and you're trying to create a route just from your current location, you can use that option. Of course, if you scroll down the page, you'll see other options as well. In the interest of time, I'm not going to go into all the different options for finding a location, but I will cover one, and that is categories. Let's assume for a second you're trying to create a route for the second or third or fourth day of your trip, and you know you're going to be staying at a hotel in Abilene, Texas, so you want that to be your starting location. Well, let's click on categories and scroll down to lodging. Now what we want to do is we want to locate the hotel in Abilene, Texas that we're going to be staying at. That's where we want to create our route from. Now currently the Zumo XT thinks we want to search for Carrollton, Texas because that's where the GPS is located. But I want to change my search parameters to a different city because I'm going to be in Abilene, Texas on the second or third day of my trip. So basically I'm just going to click on where it says Carrollton, Texas and I can choose a different location. So now I'm going to say I want a different city, and I'm going to type in Abilene or the first few letters of Abilene, and you'll notice the type ahead feature starts making suggestions. This suggestions feature is one of the greatest features of the Zumo XT, because if you're on the motorcycle with gloves on, you want to do as little typing as possible. So here, after just typing in A-B-I-L, it suggests Abilene as one of the options. So all I have to do is click on that word, and it will switch my current city of search to Abilene, Texas. Now once I select Abilene, Texas, you can see that it is now the starting point for all of my searches from this point forward. 
Now I just need to select what type of lodging I'm searching for. I can search all lodging, bed and breakfast, but I want to look for hotels and motels only. So now I can just simply scroll through the list of all the hotels and motels in Abilene, Texas, or I could type into the search box the name of the hotel to find the hotel I'm looking for. Now, if I were to click on one of these hotels, it would offer me the opportunity to select that as the starting point of our route or our trip. But I'm not going to do that in this particular example. I just wanted to show you how easy it is to find a different starting location for this particular route. So let's go all the way back to our set start location screen. So I'm just going to press the back button until we get back to the where I am now option. And I'm going to click that and you can see it chooses 4490 Young Drive. It also shows the GPS coordinates of where I'm currently located. And I'm going to select that as my starting location for this trip. Now you can see on the screen, now it shows 4490 Young Drive and the GPS coordinates as the start location for this trip. Now on this screen we have a couple of other options. We can either add a location, which is basically a waypoint that we want to stop at before we get to our final destination. The other option is to select the destination. The destination is our final ending point for this trip. And just as a point of reference, you'll always notice a green flag indicating the starting location for a trip and a checkered flag as your final destination on a trip or a route. For me personally, I like to start by adding the ending destination first. So I'm going to hit select destination and now I need to tell it where am I going to end up on this ride. Now this screen should look very familiar. It's the same destination search screen that we had when we found our starting destination. So you can use any of the tools on this screen to locate your final destination. I know my final destination is in Midland, Texas, and I'm actually going to end the route at the Kent Quick Station just around the corner from my brother's house. That's where I like to end the trip. So I'm going to search for that Kent Quick gas station. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the city to Midland, Texas. And after typing in only four letters, once again, I get some suggestions up at the top and I'm just going to click on Midland and I'm going to select Midland, Texas from the list. Now I can search within Midland, Texas. I'm just going to type in Kent Quick. And once again, after only typing in four letters, I get some suggestions up at the top and you can see Kent Quick right there. So I'm just going to click on that and it will show me all of the Kent Quick stores in Midland, Texas. And there are a few, but I know exactly which one I need because I know the address. So I scroll down to the one I want on Loop 250 North and you can see right there it's right off the loop. That's just right around the corner from where my brother lives. And all I have to do now is hit select. And now that is my ending destination for this route. Now I could actually stop right here, click the next button, and it would create a route or a trip for me just based on the starting and the ending destination. However, I have the option of adding a location, which is basically a waypoint. It is another stop along this route and the GPS will alert me that that stop is coming up and it will expect me to go to that interim location or what we commonly refer to as a waypoint. A location can be several different things. It could be uh, you're stopping for gas or you want to stop for lunch at a particular restaurant or it could even just be something like the name of a city. But what it could also be is a location on a highway to force the route to go a certain direction. And that's what I'm going to use the first location for. Rather than letting Garmin decide my route for me, I want to be able to pick specific highways. I know exactly which road I want to take to get where I'm going. So I want to make sure I have control over that. And I'm going to use the add location function 
to select a position on a highway, and that will force Garmin to create the route with that location in mind. So to do that, I'm going to use the Browse Map function. So now I can use this map to scroll around the screen and find a location on a highway that I know I want to take. I can use the pinch and squeeze technique to zoom in or zoom out, or I can also use the plus or minus buttons at the top of the screen. So in this example, I'm just scrolling down to where I know there's a point on President George W. Bush Turnpike, and I want to make sure I get that particular lane. You want to make sure you zoom in so that you get the correct lane direction of traffic. If you don't, you might accidentally hit the other lane and it will try to get you to make a U-turn to get to that waypoint. It is that sensitive. So you always want to zoom the map in enough so that you can see both lanes of a divided highway. So to create a waypoint, I'm simply going to press on that lane of traffic until I get the little blue flag. And now you can see I've added a location to my route called President George Bush Turnpike. So our starting location is 4490 Young Drive. We go to President George Bush Turnpike, which is that GPS coordinate, that location I just pressed on. And we also now have the ability to add another location. Now on this route, I want to make sure I go from President George Bush Turnpike all the way down to Interstate 30. So I'm going to add another location. I'm going to go back to my browse map, and then I'm going to locate Interstate 30 and where it intersects with George Bush. And then I will select another point on the map so that I make sure that the GPS is going to route me down George W. Bush, and then on to Interstate 30. So here I'm zooming in on Interstate 30. I go just a little bit west of President George Bush as far as the intersection, and I'm going to press and create another waypoint there, and I'm going to select that. And now I have two waypoints on my map, my starting destination, George Bush Turnpike, and I-30 West. And I can then again add another location if I want to. Now, when we come back, I'm going to show you how I add a McDonald's restaurant to this route that I want to stop at to have some coffee and maybe some breakfast, and then we'll finish our ride to Midland. Welcome back, and we're finishing our destination ride to Midland, Texas, and I always like to stop for coffee and a little bit of breakfast at a McDonald's in Willow Park, Texas, because it's right off the highway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another location. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the city for the search to Willow Park, which is a city in Texas just west of Fort Worth. And I'm just going to type in Willow, and you'll see it'll start suggesting names there at the top. So I'm going to click on Willow Park, and I'll choose Willow Park, Texas as my search parameter. And now I'm just going to type in McDonald's. Now, I could also have gone down to categories and restaurants and found McDonald's that way. But I find it easier sometimes just to type in the name. And there is McDonald's. And it comes up with the McDonald's in Willow Park, Texas. And it's on the I-20 service road, which is perfect. It's right on the way to Midland. Now, if I click on McDonald's in the list of search results, you'll notice it will open another window on the Zumo. And this screen will give us a whole lot of information about that McDonald's restaurant. It gives us the coordinates, the phone number if we need to call them, and even a TripAdvisor travel rating. And now we just click on the Select button to select that as our next location in the list. Here you can see all of the waypoints that we've currently created. And of course, we can continue to add another location if we want to. I'm going to show you one more example of how you can use categories to locate a gas station on the way to this ride to Midland. And I want to stop for gas in Eastland, Texas. That's where I always stop. So I'm going to add another location after McDonald's. And I'm going to change the city to Eastland, Texas.
So once I have Eastland, Texas chosen as my search city, I'm going to scroll down on the left side using those arrows to categories and then click on gas stations. And now I'm going to scroll through the list until I find the Alon station. You'll notice when I scroll, you can see it go by, but it, the name's kind of hidden, but that's it right there. So there is the Alon station. I'm going to select that as my destination, and now you can see it shows up as another location. Now I've gone ahead and added a couple of other locations or waypoints along this route, one of them being a Chevron station in Sweetwater, Texas, where I'm going to stop and get gas a second time. But once I've selected my final location, we can go ahead and hit the next button and have this calculate our route to Midland. So once the GPS has calculated the route, it'll show the map, but I can see just from looking at it at this distance, something's wrong. It's taking me way off the interstate and going on some little side roads and side highways, it's like every chance it gets, it takes me off the interstate. Now that's because I think I have Avoid Highways selected as a preference in my settings on this GPS. So I'm going to go check my settings and turn off Avoid Highways for this particular trip. But first, let's go ahead and click the Save button and give our trip or route a name. I'm just going to name it Ride to Midland. Now, of course, I've already got a trip named Ride to Midland, so I'm going to just add a 2 to the end. So I'll call it Ride to Midland 2 and go ahead and save this route. So now it takes us back to the route details screen. You can see here all the stops along the way until we get to the Kent Quick in Midland, Texas. So once again, we can click on the map button and it will show us our current route. And if we zoom in, you can see very clearly it's taking me way off the interstate onto a bunch of smaller highways uh, in through a bunch of towns I don't want to go through. I just want to go on Interstate 20 the whole way. So what we have to do is go into settings on the GPS and remove the uh, avoid highways selection. So I'm going back through the screens all the way back to my home page. And from the home page, I can select my settings down at the bottom right and then go into navigation and then go into avoidances. And you can see I have highways checked. And that means I have told the GPS to always try to avoid highways. And that's why it was taking me off of the interstate. So after I uncheck that, I can go back into the trip planner and reopen that trip, Ride to Midland 2. And you can see it detects that the route avoidances have changed. And do I want to recalculate the trip? And of course, I want to click yes. I want to recalculate that trip. And when I do that, magically you'll see that it now will route me all the way on Interstate 20. It won't avoid the highways anymore. Now we have a straight shot to Midland. Looks really good. Now what if you want to go into a saved trip and add another location or another waypoint in between two existing waypoints? Well, the way you do that is by opening the trip. Click on uh, Ride to Midland 2. And let's say I want to scroll down and I want to add another stop in between the Chevron in Sweetwater and the Kent Quick in Midland, Texas. Simply click on the Chevron waypoint or location. And when you do that, it's going to bring up a little sub menu of icons that you can choose from. And now you see a little plus sign down there. You click on that plus sign and now you're adding another location after that Chevron station. So after adding that last location, I'm ready to save this trip or this route. And now I want to go and execute the route. I want to tell the GPS that this is the trip I want to take. So let's back our way out all the way out of Trip Planner and go back to our GPS home page. Now, normally, when you're going to do a ride, you would click on that Where To button on the GPS homepage, and you would tell it where you want to go. 
So if we do that, you'll notice all the different options, but you won't find the trip planner here. And I'm not sure why. I don't know why Garmin did not put trip planner as one of the options in the where to submenu, but they didn't. So to execute a route, the only way you can do it is by going into the trip planner app, click on saved trips, click on the trip you want to take, and then click the go button. And that's how you execute one of your saved trips. Now, one of the nice things that the Garmin Zumo does is it lets you choose where you want to start the trip from. Now, here it gives me a couple of choices. The original starting location, which is 4490 Young Drive, the closest entry point to this trip or route, or I could go to the second location, which is President George Bush Turnpike. Now, I would probably choose President George Bush Turnpike if I'm home and I don't need to go home, so I need to go to the next point on the route. This is a really great feature because let's assume you're not at home or if you're in a hotel, maybe you rode to a restaurant to have breakfast before you start your route. You don't necessarily want to have to ride all the way back to the hotel to start your route and then go to the next location. You can choose where you want Garmin to direct you to next. It's a really great feature and it's a very powerful feature. So once you select your starting point, you simply click OK and then it will show you the map of your route and you simply have to click on the start button for the GPS to begin routing you on your trip. And that's pretty much everything there is to using the trip planner that's built into the Garmin Zumo XT. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helps you in creating and using routes on your Garmin Zumo XT. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section on this video. And don't forget to check out my Amazon store where you can order the Garmin Zumo XT if you don't already own one. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and that little bell icon so YouTube will notify you of new videos when they become available.